Hey guys, it's only been a week since I last uploaded and uh, here's another video for you guys um, especially for those who are traveling to Japan. If you're planning to travel to Japan, chances are you're going from Tokyo to Kyoto which are the most popular destinations for travelers. And there are four main methods of transportation from Tokyo to Kyoto. I personally done the travel between Tokyo to Kyoto multiple, multiple times. So in this video, I'll be explaining to you guys what is the best method of transportation for you. Since this topic is very subjective, I broke down into four different categories to determine what's the best. The categories are comfort, convenience, budget, and uh, luggage. Before getting started, make sure to hit the like button to see more videos like this and also check out my channel to see more travel guides and travel vlogs on my channel. What is the best way of transportation? While students may be willing to give up anything to travel on a budget, family travelers may be valuing more of convenience and then the ability to carry a lot of luggage with them. So here's the four main methods of transportation from Tokyo to Kyoto. Not only am I going to go over these four main methods of transportation, I will also be giving you guys tips and tricks so that you can make your travel much much better and even get a better deal in some of the cases. Okay, so having said that, let's start off explaining in the order of the cheapest and slowest to the most expensive and the fastest. First is Station 18 tickets. The absolute cheapest way to get from Tokyo to Kyoto is catching regular trains by purchasing Seishun 18 tickets at the counter in person with the green sign next to the train gates that you can find many of the big train stations in Tokyo. While there's certain time of the year you can use this ticket, you can have unlimited access to the local trains for 5 days for $120, which you can share with your friends and technically travel from Tokyo to Kyoto for $24 one way. However, not only the train rides take a long time, if you happen to miss one, it can completely screw up your schedule. So this route is only recommended for travelers who are looking to enjoy spending some time in the train, seeing the countryside of Japan and not really looking to get from point A to point B quickly. But if you're able to pull this off, you will feel very accomplished. But the transfers could be confusing, especially for foreigners, so make sure to plan accordingly. The disadvantage of this tactic is you're wasting a good day of traveling since you don't have the option to catch trains later in the day and have to start first thing in the morning. So you're going to have to pay extra night of hotel when you get to Kyoto. Whereas if you choose to take some other options, you might have more time during the day to use other than to be moving from one place to the other. In terms of luggage, you can carry whatever you want as long as it doesn't cause trouble for other people that you're sharing the train with. Next is the long distance buses. Bus is one of the cheaper way to get the long distance cover for around 50 bucks each way from Tokyo to Kyoto, which can be purchased online. For that, check the link below on the website where you can book a ticket. If you use overnight bus, then you can even stay by night at a hotel and travel to a completely different location. That being said, it's not the most comfortable ride since the bus will be making multiple stops along the way. When I took it, it was still hard for me to fall asleep since the people will be walking out of the bus at the brake stops and then the driver will be speaking quietly through the microphone inside the bus to let people know that they're at a stop. We ended up getting to the destination really early in the morning not to have the day spare for us to enjoy, but to have half a day resting and catch up on sleeps. If you're taking the bus, make sure to get some earplugs, eye masks, and get a modern bus with some privacy head cover thing. Also make sure the bus has a bathroom, because I don't know about you guys, but I hate the feeling of knowing the, the ride is gonna be long, and you have all these food and drinks in front of you, but you know that there's no bathroom on the bus, and the next stop is hours away. I would not recommend this option unless your absolute number one priority is how cheap you want to travel. The advantage of this is you save a night of hotel fee and despite of low cost you can carry up to two luggages and have one carry on next is airplanes if you can find a good deal this could be another great method of transportation but just don't forget about the transportation costs from and to airport for the departing airport and vice versa for maximum efficiency make sure to pick hnd haneda as the departing airport from tokyo and itm itami airport as the arriving airport to save so much more time other airports like nr 
MRT Narita is not even in Tokyo so it takes a long time to get there and also don't pick KIX in Osaka because that's hour away from ITM and hours away from Kyoto. All in all, together with everything, the price you will probably be looking at is around $150 plus for the airfare and transportation costs for the bus rides. In terms of the total traveling time, including checking in and bus rides to and from airport, you're looking at 6 hours if you take the closer airports and 9 hours if you pick the farther one. Since 9 hours would be so long, I wouldn't recommend catching an airplane unless you can find a good deal for the closer airports. The upside to this option is though, if you want to stay at Osaka for a night before heading to Kyoto, you can definitely do that much easier than other options of transportation. The downside is though, your schedule for the day will be totally dependent on when the airplanes are leaving and arriving on the day that you're traveling. The advantage of catching an airplane will be greater when you're traveling longer distance more than from Tokyo to Kyoto and it will be for like Fukuoka to Hokkaido which will definitely be worth it compared to all the other options. So longer the flight, better it is compared to all the other options. Finally, last thing to add is just be careful of the extra cost for the check-in baggage if you have one, especially for the cheaper airlines. It can be $20 plus per luggage, 2 at max depending on your airline. Finally is the bullet trains which is the most popular way to get from Tokyo to Kyoto which comes out to be between $232 and $271 for a round trip from Tokyo to Kyoto and 2 hours and 10 minutes to 2 hours and 40 minutes of travel depending on the type of bullet train you catch. This option is by far the best option if money is not the utmost number one priority and you're willing to give up a little bit of financial burden in exchange for time and health. Castle. It is great and that is proven by the fact that more working Japanese professionals prefer using bullet trains over airplanes, at least between Tokyo and Kyoto. The bullet trains are running all day long so you can leave at your own timing almost any time during the day and chill inside the train looking outside of the window for the sceneries of Japan. You can see the Mount Fuji from the right side of the window when going from Tokyo to Kyoto and vice versa. I've done all the options that I have discussed here except the station 18 train tickets and bullet trains are by far my favorite and believe the best. And also there are a few different ways to save money on bullet train tickets in Japan. I'll put the cost of the multiple options on the screen just now. So let me explain to you. The first option is JR Pass which allows unlimited bullet train rides and JR train rides. I know this option is recommended by a lot of people but this option is not worth it unless you're traveling to other regions, other prefectures like Shizuoka, Nagoya, Okayama, Tottori, Hiroshima or Fukuoka. If you're just traveling to Tokyo and Kyoto and maybe Osaka and Nara or Kobe, it's not 100% worth it since with other methods you can probably get a better discount. Having said that though, if you're visiting different prefectures, make sure to only activate the JR pass right before you leave Tokyo at the JR counter with a big green sign in many of the bigger train stations in Tokyo. That way you have 7 days or more of traveling outside of Tokyo using the JR pass and hopefully catching multiple multiple bullet trains. Now if you're traveling just Tokyo, Kyoto and maybe Osaka, the cheaper way to do that is just go voucher shop near many of the large train stations in Japan where you can buy a second-hand bullet train tickets for 5-8% to discounted price. This is commonly used by many Japanese people. There may be a language barrier but what you need to say is these. Number 1. Shinkansen tickets, bullet train tickets. Number 2. Tokyo to Kyoto and or Kyoto to Tokyo. Number 3. Jiuseki which means non-reserved seats or shiteseki if you want the reserved seats. And finally number 4. Number of tickets you want. All in all with at least 5% discount you're looking at for a round trip from Tokyo to Kyoto, $232 saving you like $12 with 5% discount. My favorite part about this and the reason why I like this a little more than the JR Pass is that you can catch the fastest bullet train called Nozomi which you can if you have the JR Pass and save like the extra 30 minutes going to Kyoto from Tokyo. However, unlike JR Pass, you're giving up the free JR rides for the local trains which may be a disadvantage for your case. In my experience though, traveling in Japan, especially Especially outside of Tokyo, I found myself using a lot of non-JR trains which was exactly what happened when my friend Tom came to Japan with the JR pass. He ended up paying for a lot for transportation costs anyways. Another tip is you can go online on Pratokodama 
and get $20 discount if you book the ticket five days prior. But the downside is you'll be catching Kodama, the slowest bullet train, would take you over three hours and 40 minutes from Tokyo to Kyoto. Now, in terms of luggage, bullet trains have a small overhead space where you can put backpacks and small suitcases. But for larger luggages, you will have to put them behind the last row seats of the car, which apparently is becoming only for a special reservation in May 2020. So the space is somewhat limited. However, my recommendation to you if you have a lot of luggage is to use bullet train at an hour that is not too busy. Because in my experience, during the busy hours, you absolutely have zero extra space to carry luggage. On the flip side, during the less busy hours, many of the seats are open so you can store large luggage in front of empty seats. Also, if you flip the bullet train seats, you can create another space behind the flip seats to store luggage. Lastly, make sure you avoid the busy hours that I will be putting up on the screen right now when buying non-reserved seats. Usually seats are open during non-busy hours, but during the busy hours, you may not even be able to sit down for hours and have to stand up with all the luggage in your hands, which trust me, is really, really bad in my experience. So to summarize, based on my personal experiences, I will highly recommend you guys to catch bullet trains just because of how much pain and hassle you have to go through if you decide to use other methods of transportation to Kyoto. In fact, I would not recommend other methods of transportation unless you really, really, really need to save money on the travel. I will make the transportation somewhere I will be spending money on for the convenience because even if you are able to cut the direct cost which is transportation cost in this case you will be spending more money on indirect costs which could be accommodation costs cost of your food eating along the way and the less time for you to travel the all in all i would not recommend other methods of transportation unless you really really need to save money because in that case you'll be staying at a hostel or castle hotels on accommodation and you'll probably be spending less on food anyways so if you have more time it makes sense if you are going on absolute budget plan i will highly recommend using the long distance buses over the station 18 tickets catching the local trains just because of how complicated it can be for especially for foreigners transferring from one train to the other and then the risk of you missing one on one of the trains along the way you know it's actually not worth it unless you plan wisely and you prepare and you want to see the countryside and i will stay away from airplanes unless you find a killer deal where it makes sense or if you're traveling from one japan to the other just because of how much transferring you have to do and how far airports could be to the destination anyways i hope you found this video useful and if you did don't forget to hit the like button to see more contents like this in the future and also let me know if you have any other recommendations in the comments below until next time see you bye